Okay. Just to cost $15,000. $15, and um, it would hit the target 50% of the time. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go on to MRI the, the ligaments of the knee. So we'll talk about the fibular collateral ligament, tibial collateral, anterior, posterior cruciates, and then a few others as well. So if we start on the lateral side, there's an old coronal image, and here we can see the lateral collateral ligament or fibular collateral ligament. Uh, often you cannot see it just on one cut like we can do it here, often uh, because the coronal plane and the uh, fibular collateral ligament are slightly oblique to one another. Uh, the proximal part will be anterior, and the distal part will be more posterior. But here we can see the origin of the lateral collateral ligament from the lateral femoral epicondyle coming down to combine with the biceps femoris tendon <laughs> to produce the conjoined tendon, which then attaches to the uh, fibular head. The location. Okay, so uh, Robert, uh, what do you see here? Uh, so this is some edema in the megafemoral condyle, and then it looks like there's, I'm saying there's disruption of the uh, lateral collateral ligament. Okay. The okay edema yeah. So there we can see the edema. And so this is where there is an impaction here. So this is a bone bruise from an impaction to the medial side. And then we can see the tear of the lateral collateral ligament over there. And that's due to a distraction injury there. And what kind of an injury do we call this? Robert? Uh, varus injury. Yeah, so this is a, this is a uh, varus injury. And uh, in that, the, uh, the uh, distal uh, part of the leg uh, deviates uh, medially during this injury, which causes distraction laterally, and in this case, an impaction medially, and that would be a varus injury. We'll talk about valgus injuries later. Okay, Jason. Uh, All right. So we're looking over at the lateral compartment. I think there is a tear of the fibular attachment of the LCL. Yeah. Okay. So here, and uh, so that's a fibular attachment. Here's the biceps. Now notice the biceps is, is still intact here. Now yeah. sometimes you can get a complete tear of the conjoined tendon, but you have to remember that the biceps tendon is connected to the muscle. The muscle has a lot of degree of laxity, uh, whereas the ligaments are attached from bone to bone. So if you have a bony displacement, uh, the ligament can give, uh, has to tear if there's a displacement of the bones, whereas the muscle can stretch. Uh, so occasionally you'll just get injuries to the lateral collateral ligament, and we'll see other areas in the body where this same sort of thing happens, whereas the tendon itself can still be intact. And uh, the biceps, uh, doesn't it show a little bit of a injury, John? You mean uh, right uh, at the mus musculotendinous here? junction? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'd have to look through the others, other images uh, uh, to see whether this is kind of a... a uh, a little muscular tendinous injury or not? If uh, there's uh, uh, strain, that that's a, not an unusual place for it. Right, right. The distal muscular tendinous junction, right. So, and this is the same patient. What else do you see here? So, more anterior down. Is that, are we anterior enough for the IT band? Is that what's... Uh... And there's a lot of collateral ligament. There's the iliotibial band. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, the iliotibial band is completely torn off. It's okay. attached to the, to the tibia. And we can see some bone edema over here where the impaction occurred. Okay. So this is another valgus injury, and this was done skiing. Um, one thing uh, uh, that I remember uh, 
when I was operating. Oh, these injuries were, were the ligament and the tendon are torn. Um, the severity, you can conclude, is quite severe. Um, and high, high force impact or, or, or twist, twist or whatever. Um, if a single um, ligament is uh, torn or sprained, uh, that usually is not a very high uh, um, velocity or force type of injury. Okay. But if you see one of those tendons torn, you, you, you got a very severe impact. Thank you, John. So here looking, I think it, we're looking at the LCL here and it looks thickened, looks edematous, it looks intact. Okay. And here are the sagittal images. What do you see here? Well, I think, I think we're at the level of the, the biceps attachment. Okay. So this is the biceps is actually posteriorly, posteriorly and laterally. The lateral collateral ligament, part of the conjoined tendon, is anterior and more medial. So here we can see the, here is the uh, uh, high-grade partial tear of the lateral collateral ligament. The biceps tendon is still intact in this particular patient. Mm -hmm. In the axial images, we can see the thickening of the ligament and the tendon looks intact there. Mm -hmm. okay. Would you say that that's a complete tear? I don't think it's complete. I think it's a high grade partial. Yeah, it looks like partial. Yeah. And it's LCL strain and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like uh, here we're looking at a uh, injury of the proximal or the origin of the LCL. LCL. Right here. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Here are the axial images. When you see that, um, what do you think about the age of the patient? I think they're likely going to be a younger patient. Uh, that that's uh, I think that is correct. I think John will agree with me. Yeah. So this was uh, fibular collateral ligament, and this patient also had a popliteus tendon tear right together there. Robert. All right. So we have an eighteen-year-old male with a football injury. And it looks like that um, LCL is torn again. I just see a bunch of edema and fluid in that region. Here are the sagittal images. And here we can see a lot of disruption here. This is probably the uh, biceps and then the lateral collateral ligament is, should be over in here. And it looks like the conjoint tendon is completely disrupted and torn. Okay. All right, so this is a frontal radiograph of the left knee. Is that some mineralization, uh, lateral femoral condyle? Yeah, it looked like a, cig, cig, uh, not a cigon, just, okay. So, looks like the- uh, It's not a cigon, a cigon yeah. you can in here. So it looks like there's disruption of the uh, fibular collateral ligament probably mid substance and the tendons, oh, the ligaments retracted and then yeah. balled up right there. Well, it balled up there, but it's very dark here. Yeah. On um, both the uh, T1 and the, the stir sequences. Uh, so maybe a uh, hemorrhage. And there we can see the axial images there. And, and this is, this is calcific tendonitis. Okay. Of the lateral collateral ligament. Quite a bit of inflammation around there must be very painful. Yep. Okay. 
patient fill three days before. Okay, I'm looking in the region of LCL at its proximal attachment. I see some edema there in the femoral condyle. Uh, maybe a, a traction injury. It looks like the, the ligament was intact. <clears throat> and here you can see the bone edema here. But notice that you could also see that there's the subchondral bone here of the far posterior lateral articulation is involved. <clears throat> and later on, we're going to talk about lesions in this location when we talk about cartilage disease and cartilage injuries. Um, this is a patient who fell, <clears throat> and this was not a flexion injury. This, is, this was more a, a lateral traction injury uh, at the attachment of the uh, lateral collateral ligament. So you can actually get an injury to the subchondral bone here from a, a traction injury from the lateral collateral ligament. It doesn't have to necessarily be an impaction injury from the, from the articular cartilage, and we'll be talking about lesions in this location in, in future lectures. Yeah. I'll go along with that diagnosis. Yeah. And what we found is that you, you can see these far posterior zone, and we'll, we'll talk about, I don't know, did we talk, in the previous lectures we didn't talk about this, right? Mm -mm, no, no. Okay, okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk about some studies we did as to uh, uh, the lesions in this location uh, on later talks. And it turns out about 2% of the time you'll see injuries to this part of the knee. All right, so uh, let's move on to <clears throat> posterior lateral uh, instability. It's associated, uh, tends to be associated with a number of different injuries that you look for for looking at posterior lateral corner instability. It's uh, the most important association is going to be tears of the uh, lateral collateral ligament and fibular head fractures. <laughs> You'll also we'll also talk about popliteal fibular ligament tears. Disruption of the arctic, uh, arcuate complex uh, can be seen with popliteal tendon tears as well. Uh, PCL tears, uh, lateral collateral tears, and ACL tears. But the, the ones that are most <clears throat> significantly associated with posterior lateral corner instability are fibular head fractures and lateral collateral ligament tears. They're often seen in conjunction with ACL tears, which are much more common. And when we see these associated with ACL tears, uh, it, it tends to mean that if you're going to fix the ACL tear, you're also going to have to do something to fix the posterior lateral quarter instability. So it significantly changes the surgical approach. So it's important whenever you look at AC, acute ACL tears that you also evaluate for uh, uh, also present posterior lateral quarter instability. So let's look well, at... I'm sorry, uh, there's almost always something else besides one uh, structure. So you're, it's, you cannot isolate just one structure in, in terms of injury. Okay. Um, you have to think about the meniscus, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but, but, or the capsule or, or something else. Um, you just can't pluck out one entity and and say that's all you, all you have okay so now looking at the uh the anatomic structures in the posterior lateral corner this is just kind of a diagram uh here's the iliotibial band which comes up and attaches up here uh, and then you have the capsular ligaments there are multiple capsular ligaments which typically are not independent but are thickenings of the just the general capsule uh, there's the lateral collateral ligament, which we talked about before. There's the uh, fibula, there, there's the fibello fibular ligament, uh, which can be torn in posterior lateral corner instability, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about later. And then there's the popliteus tendon that, that you're all uh, familiar with. And then there's another uh, uh, accessory lateral collateral ligament that we'll, that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later as well. Uh, if you look at it from a different standpoint here, we can see uh, this is the uh, uh, popliteus muscle here. comes up to the popliteus tendon, which comes under here and attaches to the 
uh, lateral femoral epicondyle. And with this, there's the uh, popliteal fibular ligament, which is also a, a common ligament torn in posterior lateral corner instability. It's a little bit difficult to see, and it turns out from a, from a clinical standpoint, it doesn't really have a lot of significance because if you've got significant posterior lateral corner instability, it's generally going to be associated with a fibular head fracture or a tear of the lateral collateral ligament. And this just shows uh, the, the, the complexity of the anatomy in this location. So, <clears throat> so looking at the posterior lateral corner, <clears throat> like many st structures around joints, there are typically three layers. And there's a, <clears throat> in this particular case, there's a deep layer, which is the actual capsule itself. Then there's a kind of middle layer, which has the popliteus tendon in it. And also there's the arc arcuate complex, which is this a black structure around here, which is part of the capsular structure. And then a more superficial area out here, in this case, it's the conjoined tendon. And so you look for being able to see these different layers and see the nice, sharp, soft tissue planes. If you see nice, sharp, sharp soft tissue planes like this in the setting of an acute injury, then you're not dealing with a posterior lateral corner injury. Because once you get a significant injury to the posterior lateral corner structures, this anatomic detail is obliterated by the edema you, and the hemorrhage you get in that location. So if you see this, you can uh, be confident that you're not dealing with posterior lateral corner injury that's significant. Here we can see the uh, uh, fabella, and here's the fabella fibular ligament uh, coming down through here, uh, which we can see there again. We can see it's nice, sharp, soft tissue planes, which really ex excludes uh, uh, significant posterior lateral corner injury. Okay, so so this is a patient who came in and had a known uh, ACL tear with instability, but the doctor wants to know whether there's posterior lateral corner instability. So, so what do we see on these two images? Uh, so I mean, I do see a lot of edema. On the lateral side, I. You mean in here? In the above? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. What's this structure? Is that the popliteus? Okay, that's the popliteus insertion. What's this structure? That's the uh, LCL. Okay, this lateral collateral ligament and this structure. ACL. Yeah, so this is the ACL, and so what we have here is a maybe a little tendonotic, but grossly intact lateral collateral ligament. And I hear you guys very well. And then here we can see that the anterior cruciate ligament is torn and inferiorly placed over the tibial spine. So we have an ACL tear. There's a PCL that's intact. <clears throat> and then if we look on the axial images, uh, what do you think about the soft tissue planes? Uh, soft tissue planes look r relatively intact, I'd say. Planes there, good. All right. And then here, uh, what is this structure? This one image is a little bit hard to see. Is that, this is, is that the, the is that the arcuate ligament? Uh, the, the, this is the popliteal uh, fibular ligament here. So that's intact, and that's typically torn with uh, posterior lateral corner injuries, uh, the, the fibular popliteal ligament. And then here we can see, so this was an ACL tear uh, without a posterior uh, lateral injury. So uh, this was just an isolated ACL tear. Okay, R Robert. Um, let's see, there's a lot of edema in that posterior lateral corner. Uh, I don't see the soft tissue planes as well as I did previously. It's like the ACL is probably torn. Okay, the ACL is torn. Here we can see a lot of edema over here in the posterior lateral corner. And then here you can see complete disruption of that uh, trilayer complex posterior laterally. And th that goes right through the arcuate ligament, which would be a structure right through here. And then 
Uh, and clinically, when you look at that, it's it's nothing but a, like a spaghetti without the sauce. Well, maybe you can say sauce as, as blood, but there's quite a bit of blood in, in these areas. Yeah. So so this is an ACL tear with uh, posterior lamar corner injury. So this is uh, going to require... Uh, uh, probably uh, generally a more extensive surgery and, and we'll go through those surgeries uh, if not today tomorrow okay uh, all right so looking at the lateral tibial plateau it looks like there's extensive uh, edema um, yeah to this if Fibula popliteus is tendon. Uh, I mean, is the popliteal? Yeah. So it's, ligament? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is actually the fibula popliteal ligament right. right here, which is torn. Okay. And that's very hard to see, especially in situations where you have all this kind of edema that you get in posterior lateral corner syndrome. So typically. Uh, though I used to look for the fibula popliteal ligament, there have been studies published more recently showing that it's difficult to see, and it and whether you see it or not does not have any statistical impact upon the diagnosis. It's lateral collateral ligament injuries or fibular head fractures, which are uh, important structures, and then just the the soft tissue planes. Okay. Clinical findings is what's important. Okay. Right. So, looking at the lateral knee, starting with the LCL, I think there's uh, edema in the proximal attachment of the LCL. Okay. Um, so, we see edema there. Mm -hmm. So, this is a fat suppressed image. Now, if we look at the non fat suppressed images, this is what we see. Yeah, not. Not so much signal there. Oh, okay. Maybe the fibular head is what's yeah. important there. So I, I just want to point this out. And uh, uh, you also heard this from some of the lectures that we had with Curl and Job. Uh, there are occasional cases where I still see imaging done from the outside where everything is fat suppressed. But actually, fat is a wonderful contrast agent in the musculoskeletal system. And you can see here, the significant factor here is a displaced fracture of the fibular head, which is very difficult to see on the fat suppressed image. But where you have nice interruption of the fat plane on the non-fat suppressed image, you can see it. There's an injury up here as well, but it's not really structurally significant as a displaced fracture of the fibular head. So... Uh, Again, a plea to always remember you have to include non fat suppressed images. And this patient had posterior lateral corner instability. Uh, we're looking at the mid knee here, and it looks like uh, we don't see any fibers of the ACL. We don't see what? Any fibers of the ACL. Right. Yeah, we're we're not in the right plane for the ACL. Mm -hmm. That's why. Oh, but the insertion of the PCO okay. so is disrupted. See, yeah, there's bony avulsion of the insertion of the PCL. This is the cortical bone which has been avulsed superiorly from the PCL. What about the coronal images here? Uh, looks like there's some bony edema of the fibular head uh, and a bunch of edema in the posterior tissues throughout. And there's probably an avulsion of the cortical bone here of the fibular head as well, right in that location. And what do you think of the soft tissues? Uh, we kind of have disruption of the soft tissue planes throughout there. Right. So you don't see the nice layered appearance. And this is called an arcuate fracture. Uh, in this particular case, it's we also have this patient also had an ACL tear, uh, but the patient also has significant posterior lateral corner instability, and we can see the fibular head fracture that we talked about before. We can see the loss of the soft tissue planes, and this is a case also we have a 
a, a, a revulsion fracture of the posterior cruciate ligament, which can also be seen in, so, in, in unstable fracture. Hip fracture. Yeah. And then where when you get a lot of injuries like this, uh, right next to the fibular head is the perineal nerve. It's a very sensitive nerve, and it's quite common then to get an injury to the perineal nerve as well. And uh, we'll talk about what to look for in perineal nerve injuries uh, in a later talk. So you also need to look at the uh, at the uh, extensor muscles, the proximal extensor muscles on the axial fluid sensitive images, uh, just distal to the knee. Also, okay. So this just uh, uh, states that. Uh, whenever you see significant injuries around the, the fibula of the knee, uh, look carefully at the uh, common perineal nerve uh, because uh, increased uh, edema within the nerve and thickening of the nerve is associated with uh, secondary neuropathy. Okay. Robert. Yeah, all right. So it's a 20 year old male with knee pain after injury. I see probably a moderate joint infusion. Posterior lateral corner looks like it's intact, and I don't see the ACL very well. I'd be concerned about an ACL tear. Yeah. Yeah. So the ACL should be right here on the lateral aspect of the notch of the knee, and it's torn. Good. This is on 10 29 07. Uh, the posterior lateral corner, as you said, is intact. Good. And, uh, uh, here we can see that the, the conjoined tendon looks like it's nicely intact. Okay, so historically, I'm sorry, John. Historically, we used to think uh, well, Donahue's triad was uh, the common injury, uh, but later we found out that O'Donoghue was uh, quite wrong in, uh, in, in his assumption. It's quite the opposite, it was not the medial meniscus tear, but it was a lateral meniscus tear with the ACL tears. Right. And we'll, we'll talk about O'Donoghue who's trying to... O'Donoghue was one of the um, fathers of uh, of sports medicine. Right. Yep. Good. And we'll, we'll talk about that. I've, I think I've only seen a handful of O'Donoghue terrible triad in the 50,000 or more MR scan of the knees that I've seen over the years. And we've looked carefully for it because that was a big tenet of sports yeah. medicine. Uh, before uh, MRI, yeah. I'm sorry, before MRI and so on, um, to try to find a tear on the lateral side, um, we used to have to open up the lateral side because you can't see across the joint from the medial side because the lateral compartment is very tight. And uh, a lot of times it was a very unnecessary procedure. And a lot of medial menisci were removed, quite, which were quite normal because uh, they, they, they thought O'Donoghue's triad was the injury. That's because they didn't know how to examine the knee. And believe it or not, many orthopedic surgeons did not know how to examine the knee. And I suspect some of them, if the, unless they take a, a special training, uh, they, they still don't know how to examine me. Okay. Now, this patient had a re-injury and came back uh, 11 months later and had uh, this appearance. Uh, so, the ACL still looks torn, I guess partially healed maybe, but still... Uh, doesn't look too good, and now the posterior lateral corner looks like it's disrupted. Yeah, yeah, complete disruption here. You can clearly see that you don't see those soft tissue planes, and here on the coronal images, it's completely disrupted the anatomy here. The conjoined tendon is completely torn. The ligaments are spaghetti, like John was saying, and uh, so this is a post uh, posterior lateral quarter injury, and then you. Things to look for a complete tear avulsion of the lateral collateral ligament is the most significant predictor, according to this paper in uh, radiology. Uh, any of the other findings really did not uh, significantly improve diagnostic performance. 
Here's another example of a posterior lateral corner tear and in instability with conjoined ligament tear there. Okay. All right, lateral pain after running. So looking over at the lateral uh, femoral epicondyle, we have some marrow edema there. Um, I think the popliteus uh, insertion is torn. Right? Yeah, I think you've got a probably a high grade partial tear of the popliteus uh, bone edema. Yeah, and then here we can see it as well. And this was a, a high grade partial tear of the popliteus insertion as a cause of their symptoms. Okay, let's see, dashboard injury on the AP view on the left, I'm seeing a cortical defect there on the medial femoral condyle, yeah. um, mm -hmm. maybe lateral tibial plateau, yeah, lateral tibial plateau or femoral head, maybe, yeah, it's femoral head, it looks like an avulsion fracture. Okay. So if we kind of look here, and these are kind of the insertion points of the lateral collateral ligament, which we said was uh, uh, anterior. The, uh, yeah, we can see the fibula, fifth bevel fibular ligament, the popliteal fibular ligament there, and uh, uh, distal of the uh, biceps here. Those are kind of locations. And here we can see a little avulsion of the, uh, a portion of the biceps here. Here's a lateral collateral ligament coming down there. So what, what do we see happening here? Okay, so image on the right, I mean, is there a disruption of the PCL possibly or? Well, yeah. I'm not sure if that's just the cut. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Okay. So, so let's, let me just go yeah. back again. So from, from the here, here we can see the fracture, and the fracture here, and then there's a fracture here. This fracture is called a avulsion fracture. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is called an arcuate fracture. Mm -hmm. And here we can, this is kind of what it looks like on an MR scan where the avulsed uh, bone is displaced. And, uh, and avulsion fracture sounds good to me. Yeah. And this is, this is, sign. This is you, typically due to a, uh, a uh, various injury where you have a blow to the medial side. Uh, which compact, compacts the medial side, you get distraction on the lateral side, and that's what produces the avulsion fracture to the uh, fibular head. Mm -hmm. So that's called the arcuate sign. Okay. Um, it looks like here... Looks like there's some thickening there of. Oh, is that the. Yeah, that's, that's the. Well, the TS10. Okay. And this is a high grade partial tear of the popliteus insertion with a little bit of avulsion injury to the bone there. And so that's a popliteus tear. Okay. Yeah. Robert, what do you think of this one? Uh, so we have a colon, looking at the posterior lateral corner. Um, I mean, I don't see like the biceps femoris and then proximally, so I'm, I'm be concerned it's torn there. And... Yeah, it's torn or, or we're just cutting obliquely through it. Mm -hmm. And then here's the popliteus tendon, which should come up and attach right in through there. Yeah, yeah so that's, I'm concerned about a tear there. So... Yeah. And here's a little bit more anterior cut 
we can see the popliteus tendon is looks kind of like spaghetti here and isn't really attaching to the bone. And here we can see on the axial images on the T2-weighted image, sometimes we get better contrast in these cases, and you can see the popliteus insertion is completely torn off the bone right in that location. So this is another form of posterior lateral corner instability and injury. All right, looking at these sagittal images of the knee, I think there's an anterior uh, subluxation of the tibia relative to the femur, so concern for an ACL tear with a trabecular injury posterior lateral corner. And then, yeah, the popliteus tendon looks like it's torn from its uh, attachment. Well, well, we don't see the attachment of the popliteus, right? Here's the popliteus muscle, yeah, which is uh, torn with a lot of hemorrhage in it. A lot of bone edema here as well, <clears throat> and here we can see the popliteus muscle tear, which is not an uncommon injury. And again, it's something you have to look for; or it's easy to miss. Uh, rugby injury, lateral meniscal tear, maybe. Uh, okay, maybe we have a discoid lateral meniscus here is that well this is very anterior this is probably the anterior meniscal tibial attachment oh, okay mm. uh, on this side so this is a comparison this is the symptomatic knee mm. uh, there you know this here's again let's keep going through it here maybe some some thickening at the popliteus hiatus yeah but, but keep looking at the meniscus for okay. now okay and here is the comparison normal, and here is the symptomatic one. So you Still do going with there is a discoid mm -hmm. a meniscus there. Good. Mm -hmm. And then if we go a little posteriorly here. Yeah, a little. Okay. So, hmm. Just, yeah, some. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a pretty large meniscus, isn't it? It is. We're looking at the femoral condyle. Is that is that is there some edema there? Okay. No, there's an avulsion there. Okay. Okay. So this is a periosteal avulsion in the posterior lateral corner of the knee, and this is just seen in adolescence, and uh, you you can just get the uh, uh, the periosteum avulsed here in this area. So this thickening and this abnormal signal intensity there, if we go back, let me see if we can go. It's a, it's a weird injury. It's, it's a weird injury. Say about it. Yeah, this is the injury in through here. And this is the normal over there. And in this case, it's associated with a little bit of an injury to the growth plate as well. It's not really very significant. Okay. Is it at the LCL attachment? Is that, is that this what's is causing this it? is this is anterior to the LCL attachment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um looks like over in on the lateral side. Well there's some Metal artifact. I don't know. Maybe they had a prior uh, reconstruction. Okay. So here we can see this is actually a surgical metal artifact. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this artifact from metal shavings from prior surgery here, and this, yeah. and then see so we can see more post-operative uh, artifacts here. And in this particular patient, we can see that the, 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 this patient had an ACL tear and also had a posterior lateral corner instability. And what they did is put in a graft for the ACL. And this is a lateral graft that goes between the uh, lateral femoral condyle and the fibular head uh, to stabilize the posterior lateral corner. And here are the, this is the uh, screw fixation for the femoral part of the lateral graft, and then it goes through a tunnel here where it's fixed to the fibular head. 
So this is one form. This is a non-anatomic uh, repair of the posterior lateral corner. Uh, and uh, this uh, I don't like some screw in that area. It's, it, it just doesn't hold anything. Yeah, and it's uh, and that's because typically anatomic reconstructions are very difficult because the the structures here are just uh, just mincemeat and so forth, and it's it's harder to put in an anatomic construction. Okay, that's why I use the word spaghetti, John. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now another ligament in this area is called the anterior lateral ligament, <clears throat> and this is the uh, lateral collateral ligament, <laughs> which is posteriorly, and another ligament more anterior uh, goes between at, uh, uh, inserts upon the lateral aspect of the capsule on the tibia here, but originates uh, just anterior to the origin of the lateral collateral ligament. This is called the uh, you know, anterior lateral ligament. Some people believe it's an important stabilizer of the knee. It's very variable in its size. Uh, and some people now will actually reconstruct this ligament uh, when you have injuries to the lateral part of the knee as a separate structure. <coughs> this just shows kind of a, a MR diagram of that uh, lateral of that uh, anterior lateral ligament, and it's the uh, avulsion of the insertion of the anterior lateral ligament on the lateral aspect of the fibula right here, which uh, uh, which uh, can occur producing the, the little bony fleck that you can see in some patients on plain films who have ACL tears. There's a lot of variance in, the, in this area, so. Um, it's a very complex area to, to work on. Um, you need a little bit of extra training for this. Uh, okay, thanks, John. Uh, Robert, what do you think of this case? Um, let's see. So it's a 42 year old female with knee pain for eight months after injury. Um, I'll see how at least it really looks like it's intact. I want to see it more proximally. It still looks like it's intact. So what's this thing right here? I'm assuming that's going to be the anterior lateral ligament of the knee. Yeah, so that's the anterior lateral ligament. So we're coming anterior. So what we see posteriorly, we're just barely seeing the uh, lateral collateral ligament going to the conjoined tendon here. If we go more anteriorly, we're seeing the thicker portion of the proximal anterior lateral ligament, seeing maybe something coming off here. If we go to the next cut anteriorly, we're seeing this structure coming down laterally, and this is the anterior lateral uh, ligament right here coming in. You can see its insertion on the tibia there. Go on the axial images. Uh, this is the anterior lateral uh, ligament, and here is the lateral collateral ligament. See their structures there. But they're intact. And these are intact, so this is normal. Okay. That's, uh, so that's the anterior lateral ligament. Okay, uh, Jason? There's quite a bit of variance in, in that ligament, isn't there, John? That's correct, and that's why it's controversial. Some people for a long time believed it didn't exist. Um, I, I uh, don't remember seeing the difference between the collateral ligament and, and the anterior ligament. I, I just uh, don't remember separating the two. Yeah, and I think that's why it's a little bit controversial. Surgically, it's often hard to separate them as the anterior lateral ligament is really a thickening of the capsule. Yeah, it's, it, 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 to be totally separate uh, must be unusual. I, mm -hmm. Like I said, I don't remember yeah. suturing two, two ligaments rather than just one. Okay. All right, we're looking at 
or in a meniscal tear, there's extensive edema. The conjoined tendon looks okay, but I think maybe proximally the LCL is indistinct. Yeah, well, we may not or be quite not in it. There. Maybe partial. I mean, if we go to the next cut, we can see anteriorly it's coming up here. Okay. And the next cut, there it is. All right. And then up to here. And there's the popliteus tendon right underneath it. Yeah. We have some edema in the soft tissues. Uh, actually, here we can see anteriorly, and this this ligament actually goes from the lateral femoral epicondyle down to the lateral tibia, so it's no longer the lateral collateral ligament, right? Yes. Yeah, At this point, this is the anterior the lateral ligament area. coming down there, which is a thickened part of the of the capsule. And often these are difficult to separate on MRI as well as surgically. Yeah, and we'll come back to this ligament when we talk about uh, ACL tears uh, in, another, in a later lecture. So let's move on now to the medial side. And here we can see <clears throat> there are kind of two medial collateral ligaments. <clears throat> There's a superficial medial collateral ligament, which originates here at the proximal aspect of the medial femoral epicondyle, spans the joint space, and then inserts distally uh, really on the uh, distal metaphysis cortex of the tibia. So it's typically inserts distal to what we see on MR imaging here, and that's very important, and we'll come back to later when we talk about surgical reconstruction. When it's torn, it's usually thickened with increased signal intensity, as we see here in an acute tear. If we look at the details of the uh, uh, anatomy of the medial side, again, there is a three layers, just like we talked about in the posterior lateral corner. Uh, there is a, a superficial layer, which uh, is associated with the sartorius muscle and the skin structures here. There is a middle layer, which is really associated with the sup uh, superficial medial collateral ligament. And then there's a deep layer that has to do with the uh, the uh, cor the uh, capsule, and the, the deep layer, which is very thin, is the uh, uh, deep layer of the medial collateral ligament, but the medial collateral ligament that we typically refer to as the, the superficial uh, collateral ligament, which is a much more thickened structure, and it's much more important for, um, for stability of the medial side of the knee. Now, one thing that's very important here that we'll talk about uh, when we talk about the patella is that the medial patella retinaculum, which is important for stabilizing the patella, comes uh, out and is a, a thin structure which comes around and actually has multiple attachments here. It's often called the medial patellar femoral ligament, which is a little bit of a misnomer, because as you can see here, it comes out and primarily attaches to the sartorius and the superficial medial collateral ligament and it actually does not attach to the femur. I mean, you know, to the medial patellar femoral ligament. So it doesn't really attach to the femur. It actually here attaches to the soft tissues. And uh, we'll explain why that's important and why some of the surgical procedures if that are done when, when people don't recognize the anatomy here uh, can be a problem. One of the reasons why this is it's important and that the the medial retinaculum and the medial patellar femoral ligament doesn't actually assert directly on the femur is that it's important to have uh, flexibility in its insertion because there's a lot of motion in the patella. And if you actually attach the medial patellar femoral ligament to the femur, you often over-constrain the patella, lead to anterior knee pain and rapid wearing of the articular cartilage of the patella. But, but we will come back to this and we'll talk more about that uh, when we get to the patella. Uh, now, uh, one of the structures that can also be torn, which is talked about much less than the posterior lateral corner, is the posterior medial corner of the knee. Uh, and the posterior medial corner of the knee is uh, primarily uh, uh, due to uh, the multiple attachment sites of the semimembranosus tendon distally. Uh, its primary attachment site is really to the posterior medial corner of the tibia, 
uh, but there's also a component that goes to the femur. Uh, there's a co component that actually goes to the medial meniscus and uh, to other soft tissue structures around the medial side of the knee. I think there are some seven of them. What, oh, seven of them? Okay. Yes, it goes all the way lateral. And there's a thickening of the capsule here. It's called the posterior oblique ligament, uh, which uh, branches here and is also important for stabilizing of the posterior medial cord. And this is very difficult to see because it's really blended in to the, uh, the capsule uh, on MR examination. So there is some complex anatomy here that, that we'll, we'll talk about. So if you look at the posterior oblique uh, ligament, uh, it actually has multiple components. Here's the superficial medial collateral ligament. And here, th these are just thickenings of the posterior medial capsule. And this is a semimembranosus uh, tendon that comes down and attaches to the tibia and uh, also uh, multiple other structures, seven of them, as John just said. <clears throat> uh, so here we can see the medial collateral ligament here. Uh, and then here we can see the, the medial collateral ligament on the axial images. In this particular case, there's a lot of increased signal intensity within it. And then these are areas where you see the posterior oblique ligament, uh, which is just uh, uh, difficult to d divide on MR examination into its different uh, components. It's just this posterior medial capsule. Okay, let's see who's next. One, one, one thing about the, uh, that ligament, the oblique one, it uh, um, produces instability uh, posterior anterior instability okay. uh, or, or, or uh, the anterior uh, rotatory instability. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Yeah, rotatory instability, that's right. Yep. Yeah, that's rotatory instability. Mm. Okay, so I'm seeing edema surrounding the uh, medial collateral ligament. It has some laxity, possible uh, disruption at its distal attachment. We see some edema, yeah, in the uh, lateral femoral condyle. It's maybe a valgus, yeah. Yeah, so... That this patient had a blow to the medial side of the knee and had an avulsion tear of the distal medial collateral ligament, which we'll talk about in a minute, can be a, a problem. Uh, <clears throat> it's an unusual injury to be distally. Most medial collateral ligament tears are proximal tears or mid substance tears, uh, but distal tears can be significant, which we'll talk about. And this is called a valgus injury. Uh, valgus injuries of the knee are relatively uncommon. And the reason is you've got the other side, the other knee, the other leg over here, which protects the medial side of the knee. So most injuries to the knee are actually lateral injuries, which is unprotected. Uh, <clears throat> but you still can get valgus injuries, uh, which can be significant. Uh, so it looks like, again, we've got some uh edema it looks like there's a tear of the medial collateral ligament um and then there's some bone marrow edema in the lateral femoral condyle and the lateral tibial plateau yep. so lateral, lateral bone medial tear and this is a typical injury medial collateral ligament due to a, a valgus injury yes john that that's a varus injury yeah, sorry, a varus injury Thank you. And here we can see an acute tear of the proximal origin of the medial, superficial medial collateral ligament there. Okay. Robert, what do you think here? All right. So we have two coronals with the knee. Uh, that MCL looks a little bit thickened and there's a little edema superficial. Um, We'll be concerned for a grade one MCL injury. So there we can see, but it looks like it's intact. There's nice and taut appearance. 
So this was on 6-26-2012. The patient then had an injury and came back, and this is what it looked like. So it's now looks markedly thickened and edematous, approximately. Right. You could say at least a grade two then. Yeah, and then this was a grade two, six weeks old medial collateral ligament tear. Now, uh, three decades ago, these were commonly operated on and repaired, uh, but it's now been shown that the vast majority of medial collateral ligament tears heal very well if they're just left conservatively. So uh, it, it's uncommon these days to get a surgical repair of a medial collateral ligament tear, uh, but I'll show some examples. If you have uh, uncommon displacements of the medial collateral ligament, uh, then that needs to be surgically repaired, and I'll show some of those in a minute. Well, this was a great, great tool, John, I think. So you probably would not there. Yeah, de but, definitely uh, not. In all in all days, but uh, if you have a complete tear, we used to repair everyone. And that that was uh, the rules of the day. Otherwise, yeah. you were committing malpractice. Yeah, but that's the way it was today. Yeah, all right. Is, uh, this, is this a re-injury or is no. it a healing? This is the healing. Process. There's no injury, but the the. This is a normal MCL. Oh, okay. a, a, different, a different... Same patient. Okay. But the, the patient came and had an MR scan for knee pain, but the the, MC, the medial collateral ligament is normal here. And, but this, was, this is that same ligament uh, a few years later, and this is uh, six weeks after they had a tear to the medial collateral ligament. Okay, I see. Okay. All right. Knee pain evaluate for MCL tear. Well, the proximal MCL is thickened, but I think the remainder of the tendon, of the yeah, the ligament is intact. Okay. And there's no. Uh, so this is six thirty twenty three. Here is twelve thirteen. All right, 22. no longer see the uh, proximal okay. attached. So, so this is twenty three. Yeah. This is a year before. Uh, okay. So there was a high grade. Uh, Partial tear that healed? Yeah, so this is really a tear. Uh, <clears throat> so <clears throat> uh, th this was the original injury, and this is what it looked like, uh, you know, uh, six months later. So when you see these thickened uh, medial collateral ligaments, what these are are old injuries which have healed. And we've, we've seen a number of them like this. It's is just a change in the healing process. Right, just part of the healing process. Okay. Okay. Last case here. Elior, what do you think of this case? <clears throat> yeah, looking at the medial side, there's a, it's kind of this loose structure there. Um, it looks like the MCL, the proximal attachment, has, it has detached and now it's like, now it's yeah. holding back. So this is a displaced tear. Now these are uncommon. But if this heals in this location, you're going to be left with an unstable knee. Mm -hmm. So when you see significant displacements of the MCL, it still may be a surgical condition. Uh, the other one, that, which we'll show a little bit later, is uh, when you get distal uh, tears, uh, it's often you don't see those because they're below the level of the injury. What you'll see is... Uh, the, the MCL that looks like it's kind of intact, but it'll be very wavy and it'll be unstable. And if uh, the distal one is displaced beyond the retinaculum, then it will heal to the retinaculum and not to the bone. So if you see displaced distal tears, they also may be indication for surgery now, but they're very uncommon. Uh, this is pretty if uncommon. If I was to bet, does this, this, this all down here just try it? I'm sorry. So we don't I'm see the ACL, but, it, but look, I, them. I don't know. <clears throat> it could be, but we don't have the other images to see if the you have the other injuries. So I think it's probably torn, and and um, the, the medial collateral medial collateral ligament is uh, pulled down, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, uh, that's quite a 
medial uh, well as the lateral injury uh, uh, most most ligament injuries are on the knee are medial yeah okay well why don't we stop here and uh that's an interesting finding here john i've seen it before but uh, that, that, that's a slide you can't repeat very often yeah okay we'll see everybody tomorrow have a good one everybody